Hey folks, I'm Beth Selene, author of The Powers Here, or David McKnight. In today's video, you'll see part five of my conversation with CPAs Greg O'Brien and John Malone, in which we discuss how an IUL's fees can be as low as a Vanguard index fund. And I think you said um, in those, the IUL policies, you know, net of fees, you know, you're looking at like five to seven percent rate of return. I think that's where some people get hung up too, is just like, what, what are the fees in, in these insurance policies? And so like, is, is there, uh, are you able to kind of just like touch on those and like how, the, how they're structured? I know that, I know that there are probably, there's a lot more than meets the eye, but, uh, you know, in a, in a kind of rudimentary fashion, I think that would be great. Yeah. So, so these policies are front end loaded. Um, most of the expenses you experience in the first 10 to 15 years. So the way I describe it is as follows. The the fees are higher in the uh, early years, but they're a lot lower in the later years. But when you average it out over the life of the program, it should cost you about half a percent of your cash value per year. So part of what happens is people fixate on the fees of the policy in the early years, which is a mistake because the only way it makes sense to have one of these policies is if you keep it your entire life, which for most people is going to be anywhere from a, you know, a 30 to a 50 year proposition. So why fixate on the fees for something in the first 10 years? Why make your decision on a 50 year proposition based on what's going on in the first 10 years? You should be making your decision based on what the average fees per year are over the life of the program. And I've seen some of these policies when structured properly that you get to the 30th year and the average internal expense per year is something on the order of 25 basis points. And that's, I mean, that's comparable to a Vanguard uh, index fund. I mean, th these are really, really cost effective if you plan on keeping it your entire life. And I make the case that you shouldn't start one of these things. It's like getting married. Don't start it unless you're planning on keeping it till death do you part, right? Makes makes sense. I, th I think we've always told people, David, when they're getting into any type of life insurance, right? That there's no, there's no get rich quick of life insurance, right? You're not hitting any home run. It's a, it's a very very long, uh, very very long term play. And I think you know, frankly, it's pretty boring, right? When 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 you get down to it. Um, but as you explain it here, that does that does make sense to me. That you know, fees are front loaded, but you got to look at it over that 30, 50, 60, whatever that that time that time frame may be. So, like if if you're I guess like where where do you start with someone? Like, if you're a business owner in their 30s and their 40 in their 40s, mostly speaking, right? Life insurance uh, of any type is like the last thing on their radar. Like, where do you start with somebody even having that conversation? Well, there's there's a very specific utilization of life insurance that I think is very very compelling, and it's something that was highlighted in a recent study by Ernst and Young. Basically. Um, you can utilize life insurance as what we call a volatility buffer in retirement. And I'll explain briefly how that works. So we've all heard of the 4% rule. You get a million bucks by day one of retirement. The most you can take out is 4% per year. Why? Because you're going to have wide swings in the rates of return in that portfolio over, over time. And so 4%, they've done all the back testing in Monte Carlo's. 4% is the amount that you can take out and, and maintain a high likelihood that your money is not going to run out of, you're not going to run out of money before you run out of life, right? So um, the question is, why is that 4% rule the 4%? Why isn't it 8%? Well, it's because if you experience a negative 30 in a given year and you were taking 8%, then that could cause your portfolio to go into a death spiral from which it never recovers. And this is what we call sequence of return risk. Dave Ramsey was in the news recently because he refused to acknowledge that sequence of return risk even exists. Okay. So the strategy that, that Ernst and Young outlined in their study was they basically said, if you're a young guy, we're gal, and you save 30% of your retirement contribution. So whatever would, would let's say you're planning on saving 50,000 per year go towards retirement, take 30% of that or 15,000, put it into a life insurance policy. By the time you retire, if you can accumulate at least three years worth of living expenses in that life insurance policy by day one of retirement, and then live out of your life insurance in the year following a down year in the stock market, that will give your stock market portfolio a chance to recover before you take further uh, distributions. And that act alone 
will double your sustainable withdrawal rate on that stock portfolio in retirement to as high as 8%. So if I were sort of trying to understand how to utilize life insurance in a mathematically corroborated way that's going to improve my financial outlook in retirement, I would say take 30, earmark 30% of your retirement savings for a cash value life insurance. I, 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 I would recommend an index universal life policy and put the remaining 70% into your Roth 401k or, 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 or 401k, depending on what your tax bracket is today, get the match. Can't, you can't forego the match. And then by the time you retire in the first 10 years, it's really critical the first 10 years, but live out of your cash value life insurance in the years following a down year in the market, and then live out of your stock market portfolio all the other years. And if you do, you will dramatically increase according to the Ernst & Young study and according to my own findings, I've got calculators I built to, to analyze this, you will be able to take much higher distributions. You'll be able to wring more efficiency out of your stock portfolio if you follow that course. That's very interesting. So, so tan tangible example here. So you're saying, rewind a couple of years here when the, the the market went way down at the beginning of COVID, everything, everything crashed. So, so you would have recommended in that case, if someone is new to retirement there, that is that stock value dipped in their account to have lived off of the life insurance in that year, wait till the, the market came back in 2022 and then return to, to normal? That's exactly right. Yep. So very, very very interesting. Interesting. Following the down year in the stock market give because what does the stock market do typically in the year after it goes down? It comes, comes back, back with a vengeance, right? Yep. If it if it keeps going down, if it goes down another year like we saw, you know, around the 2000, 2001, then live another year out of your out of your out of your your life insurance and give the stock market a chance to recover. So it's um I've looked at this, I've analyzed this a hundred different ways. The only the only vehicle, the only tool that allows you to accumulate that money in a tax-free way um, that allows you to have it in place by day one of retirement um, is is the you know the cash value life insurance. It allows you to build that money up slowly over time and then access it immediately upon retirement should you happen to retire in a bear market. Okay, folks, that was part five of my interview with CPAs Greg O'Brien and John Malone. In the next 10 years, I'm looking to put 100,000 Americans on the road to the 0% tax bracket. If you would like some help implementing a balanced, comprehensive approach to tax-free retirement that shields you from the impact of higher taxes down the road, head on over to davidmcknight.com and click on the Connect with an Advisor button. I'm happy to refer you to an advisor in the Powers Your Network that has been trained, vetted, and qualified personally by me. If you're a financial professional and want to learn how to become a certified Powers Your Advisor, head on over to powersyear.com and opt into my free video series. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. I'll respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.